Hey YouTube, it's Tech Savvy Solution here and I'm here with a video review of what I think is the most unique phone on the market right now. And it's not, again, it's not like the best processing speed or anything, but it's just like a really, really cool phone. So I just wanted to give a review on it. It is, yes, the Kyocera Echo, the first, the world's first dual screen phone. So I'm just going to give a video review. I know it's been released for a little while now, but you guys should take a look. It's just, yeah. Okay. So I know you guys are waiting for this. Oh, 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 yes. This thing is dual screen, and when you do have it in dual screen mode, you have this in just like gigantic, like 4.3 inch display, and gets you a lot of screen real estate. As you can see, the launcher is pretty smooth. I'm using Launcher Pro, so even in this tablet mode, it's running great. Now that does have something to do with the fact that it does have a one gigahertz processor, so it's not going to be like running on a 6 megahertz um, processor and being laggy and everything. No, it's going to be fairly speedy. Now, I just want to like show you the box that it comes in first. It's a really cool box. And you open it up. It's for Sprint, so no, I don't really use this phone. It's my personal phone. But it's just pretty cool. And it opens up like this. Like, how cool is that? Okay, and then you have your spare battery that it comes with so you can always plug it in if you're on the road and you're like my battery is running out then you can go ahead and plug it in and charge it and like yes because you might need that and it's included free of charge and then you have your basics guide and everything but we don't really need to go through that so let's just get into what the, this phone is all about it's just a really cool box So, box aside, let's look at this thing. And basically, I'm going to be running through all the stuff that is unique to this phone. So, if you go to, say, your phone app. Okay, you have a gigantic phone. Whoa. Um, and let's say you want to switch apps. Now, let's, let's go to the browser. Okay, in order to switch apps, we're going to tap like that. And then this is called simultask. So the thing about simultask is that you can only, you can use two apps simultaneously. And I'll show you just in a little bit. But those apps are limited to the apps that it supports. So your browser, contacts, email, gallery, messaging phone, and view queue, which is YouTube in a different view. So let's just say, well, well let's just say I want to go and open up view queue. So we have YouTube up top, and we have our browser on the bottom. Alright. And let's just say, no, no, you know what, I, I want YouTube on the bottom, because I'm like OCD like that, so let's just um, switch. There we go. Oh, I'm, I feel better now. I have YouTube on the bottom that I can watch my videos. Or you're like, I need to do two things at once, and um, browse two different web pages. So you want the browser on the bottom. Let's say you want browse. Oh no, you can't do that. Hmm. Let's see. Nope. No, no. Switch to browser. And then we want browser. And then we want two different browsers. Oh, too bad. You can't have that. Could have sworn that you could have. Hmm. Yes, yes you can. Okay, I got it now. So, okay, over here, I want to go to Google. And then here, I want to go to Engadget. So here, you're just loading up two different pages. So Engadget is over here, and then Google is over here. So let's say on Engadget, you're reading an article, and notice... Um, let's go to the desktop view of this thing. And while that's loading, you know, you could scroll on this part. I notice that it's not even that laggy, even while it's still loading. Let's say, okay, we're pinching the zoom. Which, it should be smoother once this thing finish, uh, finishes loading, and we'll try that out when it does. 
Um, let's say we do not know what the S4 MSM8960 is. Although, secretly, we do know. So, hold up. Let's, on this page... Select. Copy link URL. And then over here, oops. We're gonna, oops. Should paste, paste. There we go. Then on here, you can be like, oh, so this is what it is. Here's the news stories for this. Now I kind of have a background information on what this thing is. And then when we go ahead and read this article again, we'll have, we'll be a little more enlightened. Honestly, I don't really think this feature is like, um, very practical or anything because on a normal phone, we can just, oops. Uh, I did not want to do that. We can just open up two different web browsing pages. So, let's see, Windows. And then we can search on this window. And when we're done with that window, then we can go and switch between windows. And then it's, it's a little faster, too. And as you can see, the pinching the zoom, it's not the smoothest. It's not like iPhone quality. But it gets the job done. You also have the buttons down here, too. So that's just like a look at the web browsing capabilities. Um, so let's keep on giving you a tour of like the different, the, the features that are unique to this phone. So I'm going to go ahead and open up YouTube. Not on YouTube. Oh wait, hold on. Let's open up ViewQ because ViewQ is their proprietary app for YouTube. So if you... Put this in tablet mode. Let's um let's go to my channel. Up. Okay. So here we have stuff about me. That's really cool. They have like subscriptions, playlists, videos, favorites. And um let's go ahead and look at the Motorola Droid review. So we have the video playing up top over here which will load. And then we also have videos that you can drag and drop here. And then it's like a queue. So you can let's say I want to Oops. Oh no. Hold up. Drag and drop videos here. So you can drag videos and drop over here. I just haven't figured out how unfortunately. No. All right. But you can. Sorry about that. But while you're watching a video up here, you have all the controls. And you can even switch full view, but it's not too practical. So while you have that, you can um, have a queue waiting for, um, waiting for you when you're done watching the video. I should be able to, but yeah, drag and drop video. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna put that aside and we'll move on to the next feature of this. This is bugging me. I should explore that feature more. But okay, moving on. That is ViewQ. Now, if we take a look at any of the other applications that this thing comes with um, things that are unique to this. We have something called Eco Mode. And what Eco Mode does is that it helps you adjust the settings of this phone to conserve as much energy as you can. So here we have settings for okay, I want Eco Mode to turn on when my battery is down to 20%. 
I put it on never because I'm, you know, I don't really care about eco mode. But here are the eco settings. And you have a really cool animation too. So if the more settings that you click, the more leaves you get, which equals the more eco-friendly you are to this device, which also equals the longer your battery life will last. And the battery life isn't bad after the update, the gingerbread update. So I wouldn't be complaining about it so much, especially since they give you like an extra battery to take around everywhere and you're like, yay, extra battery. So I, the battery life isn't too bad. So yeah, those all those reviews about this battery life sucks are not true. It doesn't suck. Okay, so back to normal phone mode. You can see like, first, okay, first when you have um, this put back in normal phone mode, okay, if you want to flip it open, you go like this, and then like this, and you can keep it like this, because um, let's say you're going to go on the web, and then, I don't know, you're typing something, like check out this keyboard, it's huge. You just be like, hello, I have, oops, I have a ridiculously humongous keyboard. I, I don't think I spelled humongous right, but anyways, it's just a huge keyboard and you can type like this. And especially if you have small fingers like me, it makes for easy typing. So then, yeah, and then you can pull it back and lock into place, and that's that. So, let's just um give you a physical tour of this phone. It is on the chunky side, but think of it as having, like, mm, like a DS Micro, like a Nintendo DS Micro, since it's, like, dual screen, right? Um, but it's, like, a phone. It's like, whoa, and you have um the backlit keys over here. They're touch sensitive, obviously. And obviously this phone's by Sprint, so all UGSM users, sorry. Over here we have a LED notification light. And then as well as your speaker. And then over here we have nothing, because it's a second screen. But we also have another set of um, touch sensitive uh, navigation buttons for home, menu, and the back button. And over here we have our hinge. In the back, we have where the hinge is like this, and it gives really good support. I had no trouble with the hinge whatsoever. It looks like it's going to break, right? But it's like very sturdy, so I'm quite happy with it. Also in the back here, we have our camera, which is this like really like ghetto lens. Um, it's not the best lens though, it just looks nice. We have a flash though, although not dual flash, very misleading on this part. Um, and then our speaker grill. On the side, we have our standard 3.5mm headphone jack. And the cool thing about this phone is that you don't have to take off the battery cover in order to access the memory port. And then we have our sleep and wake power button, volume rocker, and then a port for your USB. I do have to note these like um, buttons and slots over here are like, they kind of look like they're from the 1990s, kind of outdated. They probably could have done a better job overall in the construction of like the style wise of this device, but again, it's very sturdy. I also have a slot for a lanyard, so I wanted to put this here to show you that it does have a slot for a lanyard. And yeah, okay, so on the back here, let me just sleep this device so that I don't hit anything, but I'm going to pry open the back cover. Um, should be a slot somewhere to pry it open easily. There we go. You just slide it. And then the back here, we have our battery, 1370 milliamp hour. I think they could have made a 1500 milliamp hour battery just to increase the battery life, but they probably have their reasons for keeping it this size. And that's pretty much all you get when you open it up. So there's not really much of a reason to open up unless you want to change out your battery or something, which is kind of rare to do so. So we're just going to slide this thing back on. And man, this thing is like thin. They want to conserve as much space as possible since the phone is thick already with two screens. So. 
So if we can snap this thing back on. Oh, I snapped it on wrong. Okay. Really not much of a mechanism for getting this cover back on, but here it is. It's back on. And of course we have our Kyocera logo over here. So that's pretty much it. Um, that is the Kyocera Echo. And one thing to note is the lock screen. Yeah, pretty nice. And of course we have our notification bar up top thinking of getting this phone to review, by the way. And yes, yeah, so overall, very positive opinion on this phone. Um, it has basic standard features plus some extra stuff. And if you wanted like a ridiculously large keyboard, like I said, let me show you this again, it's ridic. It takes up the entire space. Then this phone is for you, especially since like you know, on unlike uh, physical QWERTY keyboards, you're like, oh my god, I can't like click. The keys are very unresponsive. You have to like press down on them like really hard in order to get a response. Like they're not like slows down my typing. They're not responsive. Well, these on-screen keyboards, like the advantage of it is that okay, you don't you can barely touch it, and then it'll give you a response, and it's great. And the disadvantages of of them is that okay, if you have a phone that's like this big on this like this screen. Hey, that was like a bad example. Okay, if you have a phone that's this big, the on-screen keyboard is like this small, and you're like, I don't want to type on it. But what happens if you have an on-screen keyboard that's like this big? You you have all the pros of an on-screen keyboard without the cons of it being too small. It's like huge. Sorry, I just have to rant about it. But if you wanted a phone with a cool keyboard, believe it or not, this is it. This is where it's at. It's, yeah, one of, like, the best in keyboard inventions I've seen. Um, but aside from that, it's a pretty cool phone. I mean, not that the keyboard wasn't cool, but everything else was standard, but because you have the dual screens, because you have the tablet-sized real estate when you open it up, 4.3 inch, I would say this is phone to get, especially since it's, um, it's cheap now. When it was first released, it was like expensive, but now you can get it probably either for ninety nine ninety nine or for free, I believe. Let's just take a quick look at the camera first before we leave this review. It's not the best camera in the world. Yeah, but what do you expect? The lighting is pretty good. The saturation is pretty good. It's not like tinted. On this camera, it looks like it has a blue tint, but in all honesty, it's pretty neutral in terms of tinting. A little on the cooler side, if anything, but... That's what I like about this phone. Like Nexus S has a blue tint. Um, that its camera has a blue tint. Some other phones have like a warmer tint to it, but this is it's pretty good. In terms of video recording, we can have an option between video mail and long video. It should get 720p, although on this software version it does not. But yeah, it's pretty standard Android camera. And then when you open up into tablet mode. We have access to your recently taken images, and then just the entire top screen is dedicated for the phone. And then you have the controls on the bottom here. But anyways, like I said, battery life isn't too shabby. You have a pretty unique phone, and if your friends are like, you know, watching what you do with your phone, they're going to be like, oh my god, that, that's a really cool phone, it has two screens. Then you could be like, oh yeah. And then you could rule text messaging because your phone is so freaking fast at typing text messages and messaging in general. So, in general, good opinions on this phone. But that's about it for this review. Sorry it was a bit long, but as always, I always do in-depth reviews, and I hope you enjoyed um, this review and got something out of it. If you do like what you're seeing, please rate, comment, or subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later on the next video review or tutorial.